Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Account, and welcome back to the channel. The FC24 market really is never going to be the same again. Not after EA pumped hundreds of millions of coins into people's accounts yesterday with compensation. Now, we knew it was coming, but we're really only starting to realize the impact that it's going to make on this market for the rest of the year. It's going to impact all of us in some sort of way. So I want to talk about that and go through that whole situation as it's impacting the market right now in this game and look forward to today's content on Tuesday. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you are new. Let's look at yesterday's SBCs. It was expected to be a quiet Monday, right? Mondays have been pretty quiet. I figured with the weekend being as nuts as it was, that's probably going to be the opposite of what Monday was. And it, it was. It was quiet, right? We had one player SBC that was, I guess, a surprise, Lamine Kamara. Honestly, genuinely nice card. 88 stats, like everywhere it seems, but then 86 dribbling, 5 defense, and 86 physical. You've got intercept and power shot plus, and a 5-star weak foot with the high high work rates, plays anywhere in the midfield, centrally 99 long shots. Um, I think a lot of people are looking over this SBC because they're just like, who and why? But I think this is actually an SBC that most of us should be doing. If you're running the menus right now, doing the 83 times 10s, doing the 81 plus player picks that dropped yesterday as expected, you do need two team of the weeks, but all of us right now, we're looking for a place to put our 82s and our 83s. So honestly, this is just kind of almost a free card if you think about it that way, because it's some place to put your extra fodder into. And yeah, team of the weeks, sure. That makes the price of this SBC look really expensive. It's not 80K. Like Footbin says 80K for this. Nah, just get your extra 80 twos and threes from doing player picks this week chuck them into this once you've done whatever else you want to do and uh yeah you'll have a card that maybe could be good for an evo in like one month or two months or something you know 88 rated card with those kind of stats he could go into the 90s with a third play style plus because that's potentially coming during team of the season as well something that we we're going to mention in today's video and just have to kind of put on our minds i know we just got all the players in birthday promo that were all two play style pluses but we might be getting close to three play style pluses on just a few cards. So we'll talk about that. Now, we've already mentioned it. A piece of yesterday's content that, I mean, come on, we'll be honest. We were expecting it. EA's been really repetitive uh, recently with the upgrade packs. And I'm going to mention that again today when we look forward to today's content on Tuesday. It's been really copy-paste. And it's been a schedule, I feel like, for the last... Basically, since team of the year, it's been the 80 plus player pick one week, the 81 plus player pick the next. Um, and then same thing with like 83 tens, 84 fives. But guys, the 81 plus picks, we're not hating on them. We love them. Look at this state of that 88 Bernardo Silva from a one off player pick. Get these done. It is great for exchanges, for crafting the SBCs. The thing that I find myself running out of, though, is gold non-rares. And I'm needing to do my daily gold upgrades and my daily bronze and silver to keep stocking my club up with those gold players to put into the player picks. That is a key thing to do. But I think a lot of us know that because you've been doing this or we've been having this same grind in the game now for such a long time. Now, again, another pretty familiar SBC, the 85 plus player pick dropped only two times per day repeatable. It'd be nice if this was maybe three times, but it is what it is. Um, and we'll be able to do it each and every day two more times. So that was all of the SBC content that was dropped. One thing I will say is um, it's going to be very annoying. Take a look at these two SBCs right here. The 83 times 10 resets from when I'm recording this in 15 hours. The 85 plus player pick resets in 14. That is because of the time change. The 83 times 10 was out before clocks went forward in the UK. So if they don't fix this and adjust it, there's going to be like 1 p.m. U or 6 p.m. UK, 1 p.m. Eastern, normal content drive, dime, content drop every single day. And then some of the refreshes for SBCs are going to be an hour later. So a little bit annoying, but that's just one thing. If you get on for content today and you're noticing your 83 times 10s aren't refreshing right there, that will probably be why? But honestly, a pretty quiet Monday, again, as we mentioned. And I will say this, speaking of the SBC grind and the craft, these Golasso cards, they are actually really packable, man. Like, I had so many people tweeting me yesterday pictures of Van Persie and Campbell and especially a lot of Berbatov, Big Bros, Okocha, and even a lot of people yesterday, not even just from store packs, but from 85 plus player picks even. Make sure you get those done, man. If you're doing the 83 tens, the 85 plus picks are really good. A couple people tweeted me Ginola's yesterday from those, Cafu, a Charlton, I think, an Aloe Weber 93. Like, it is worth it to do those 85 plus player picks and grind the menus, even if it only takes you like 30 minutes or you hit them on companion. I think it's actually worth it to do those guys because it seems like the pack weight on these Golasso cards is 
kind of crazy. So I'm just saying, I'm not, yeah, I'm just saying the tweets that I'm getting, I'm seeing a lot of people packing these cards. That's all I'm trying to tell you. So let's get into the big news though. All right, yesterday was a day that we kind of knew that was coming because we knew that EA tweeted about it. We just didn't know exactly when it was going to happen. But yesterday, right before content was actually when it happened. And we're talking about compensation, guys. Of course, because this Yaya Toure and the Wesley Schneider cards a couple of weeks ago when they got upgraded, they changed leagues, right? They changed from La Liga to Premier League in Yaya Toure's case and from La Liga to Eredivisie in Schneider's place. This was the tweet that they put out. They said earlier in the week, the fantasy cards had incorrect leagues. The items have been updated and players who obtained them were uh, going to be sent back there coins right remember this whole situation it didn't impact everybody but we knew when it happened that it was going to impact the market a lot and oh boy did it and it kind of went down exactly as we thought it was going to go first of all the compensation was if you bought yaya toure or schneider when their leagues were messed up you got your coins back and during that time is when these cards went to three million coins um it wasn't even it was more than two weeks ago so i can't even show you exactly on the graph and the daily graph doesn't even show it but this yaya was three million coins so basically what ea did yesterday is they put hundreds of millions of coins on the market and this is going to impact the market for the rest of the entire year and of course it impacted the market yesterday guys not only had people bought the yaya toure's once right just to buy the card because like oh my goodness it's prem ea messed up let me buy this and try it out right whatever reasons there were for buying these yaya toure's and for buying the schneider cards when that whole situation was going on um, there were people that bought it once. There were people that bought it twice. I've even seen people with 90 plus million coins that got compensated from buying Yaya Toure's and Wesley Schneider's. This is just FIFA Trading Romania, one of the leakers that we get a lot of information from. He's posting his companion app showing 22.7 million. There were so many coins put onto this game. And it's weird, right? Because it's just kind of like coins appearing. Because it's compensation. They were just given out. And I know a lot of people are upset about this. Because like, man, why couldn't it have been me? Why did they have to give out coins to everybody? And yeah, it's it's a sticky situation from the from the get-go, right? We talked about this when it happened. It's it's a compensation situation. That if you were there and you were able to take advantage of it, and if you even risked it to take advantage of, then you're technically getting compensated and you're getting rewarded for it. Um, but then again, people try to do the same thing with the goalkeeper situation that happened last week. And then EA is coin wiping and, and banning so many people. So yeah, guys, it's always a sticky situation. I again will say this. I hope that EA never do this again. I don't think they should give coins back now after seeing it happen three four times in this game even if i was somebody who had benefited from it i think i'd be saying the same thing not just because i didn't get free coins i was not compensated for this i did not buy any of the yayas or the schneiders and i know a lot of you guys didn't but i just think this sets a bad precedent and that's my take on the issue now the reason why it's going to impact the market and it's going to impact all of us now for the rest of this year because of ea making this decision this is what i want to get through to you guys we have seen a massive inflation on the market on the top tier most meta cards. Think about it. If EA gave you 3 million coins and said, here you go, do with it whatever you will. What are you going to go do with that? Maybe open a store pack, right? But you're probably going to go out to the market and try to buy some players that you have not been able to afford because they were a couple million coins too expensive. And that is exactly what happened yesterday. This 97 Cruyff was a 9 million coin range, even right down before content, 9.1 million. These coins got given out right before the content drop, like we mentioned. He exploded all the way to 10 million coins plus. He kind of came back down after that big explosion, but he's still 10 mil. Guys, this is putting so many coins on the market out of nowhere, which creates more demand for those top tier, more meta cards that people can now afford. Same thing happened with Team of the Year R9 Icon. Yesterday, he was down as low as 11 million and he went all the way to 13 million coins. We could look at cards like this for 30 minutes on this video today that did this exact same thing. There was a huge, massive panic buy on the market as people who got these cards went out and they bought these cards off the market that they wanted to use because now they could afford them with the extra millions of coins that they had. It even kind of took place with some of the cards in packs like this Golasso Charlton think about it if you bought a Yaya and you got given three mil I mean only half of that's going to a Charlton yesterday he was up at 1.62 I remember looking right after content he's back down a little bit now but there were so many cards yesterday that spiked and are even still maintaining a price that is higher than what they were before due to a lot more coins 
being on the market. So if you buy and sell this Yaya Toure card now, nothing has to do with compensation now. You're not going to get 3 million coins or whatever. Um, but that is a situation that is going on. And the way that it's going to impact the market going forward is, remember how expensive team of the years were when they had two playstyle pluses? They were very, very rare. And they were just super hyped, right? Well, think about all these coins that are now sitting on the market that are going to make the higher tier, more expensive part of the market you know, more expensive throughout the rest of the year. I, I think cards, if during team of the season, whenever they're dropped, the first couple of days, those top tier, most elite cards, the higher rated ones, they're going to be basically like we've seen for most of these other promos extinct at whatever price range they're at. They're going to be so much more expensive and inflated. Basically the top tier of the market, the most meta cards, your Ronaldinho, your team of the years, your other crazy icons like that R9, they're going to stay more inflated through the rest of the entire year because there are so many more coins that were just created and sent out. They just printed the coins, basically, gave them to people, and that's more demand for these cards on the market. So it's going to impact all of us for the rest of the year because those top tier cards are probably going to be even more expensive. And imagine team of the seasons with three playstyle pluses. People are going to sell everything to go get those cards. And when they sell everything, the market's going to have more buying power than it did before, which is going to make those cards, of course, since there's barely any tradable packs in the store anyway, and it's mostly all untradable, those cards are rare to begin with. They're going to be even more expensive on the market because people are going to have more coins to be able to go out and pay for them. So I know you're like, Nate, I didn't get compensated, but maybe you saw something yesterday on Twitter or people posting about what that compensation was. Or you're like, why in the world is the Yaya Toure and Wesley Schneider on the front of footband? Well, that is the reason why. And I want to talk about it because it is going to impact this game and basically all of us for the rest of the the calendar year, or I guess the cycle of the year, right? Now, for the rest of the market, right, there are some cards that are moving, and I do want to point this out too. Uh, the Golasso cards yesterday moved very well. Guys, there's a lot of hype for these cards. That is 100% for sure. Jurgen Kohler went big bro, of course, the big bro, right? This card yesterday went from 290,000 coins in the early hours on a Monday, uh, and he went all the way to 390k. Look at this rise. He got low, low, low into the morning hours. Boom, big bounce to 390. He did drop back down to where he is now, like 315, but it happened on a lot of cards. Al O'Wayron, the card on the market, not the SBC version. He's getting very low right now once again, but yesterday he went from just around a million coins up to almost 1.2, and that was before any of the compensation was given out. Same thing with Jabi Alonso, who I actually picked two of up on the market just now for 500,000 coins flat because yesterday he went from 509 all the way to 585. I'm hoping that some of the market replicates what it did yesterday, especially because today is Weekend League Rewards Day and people who had not opened their rewards yet are going to hopefully go get some coins today and go out and buy these cards off the market, right? Think about it. It's kind of like what happened yesterday with EA giving out a bunch of coins like EA is going to give out a bunch of coins today, just what we expect normally, though, through weekend league rewards. This Aloe Wayburn card is very low, 930K. That's very, very cheap. I'm kind of wishing that I would not have bought Jabi Alonso so that I could pick up this card because he could very easily be back over a million coins today. I don't know if the market's going to go up as much as it did yesterday on the Golasso cards today after rewards. But what I do want to mention is, a lot of the market moved yesterday on these cards, right? Like, again, look at the Cruyff with the coins being given back. Charlton was up. Jabi Alonso, Colaire, Cafu moved well. Alloway removed well. Sol Campbell moved pretty well. Um, even the lower tier cards, they've had some good fluctuations, and I hear that they lazy sell pretty good on the market as well, which is always a good sign. This team has a lot of demand. People want to try these cards out and use them. Uh, I think it's just because the prices are, like, feasible even for people who don't have crazy millions of coins i mean you've got a lot of cards in here that are under two mil i mean you've got ginola and cruyff that are above two million coins and everybody else is under 1.5 where charlton is and 1.3 for this cafu if this is any other promo cafu would probably be like three mil i mean shoot how much was um like carlos alberto and foot birthday icons team one he's been getting destroyed in price because cafu is better than this this guy was 2.6 mil when he was in packs, and even after he went out of packs. So I think this promo is seen as a lot more affordable to some people, and that's why you're seeing the Golasso cards move as much as they are. So there's demand here, and I'm hoping that they do decently well. I don't think I'm going to invest in these cards 
as we get them kind of nearing their out of pack stage as we head towards the weekend uh, because we're getting a team too and that's going to bring even more cards and again probably more cheap icons and heroes with a similar pack weight that we're going to be excited for to get our hands on and try out cards again there's so many of them that they could still release for the Scholasso promo that are cards that have not had very usable versions this year that could all of a sudden become usable so watch out for that if you don't want to mess around with the risky stuff in packs always go to the trusty out of packs i've been watching foot birthday cards a lot most of them are doing good uh de bruyne is down a little bit i will say i'm losing some coins on him right now if i were to sell at the moment uh veron still doing decent but a lot of these cards and other out of pack specials the fantasy cards um you could even go as far back as like winter wild cards future stars i'm trying to stay if i'm trading with with cards and with promo items that are after a team of the year just because that's where a lot of the double playstyle plus stuff came into effect um, and those cards are probably a little bit more meta and are really rare seemingly too so that's where i'll be trading now again we talked a lot about fodder in yesterday's video too and i want to clear it up and say i still think that like if you want to just sit if you want to make an investment and say nate i'm tired of this game i want to buy some cards and just sit on them for like two or three weeks come back uh, maybe watch the videos pay attention until they go up and then get out at the right time right that seems like a pretty easy investment i think 84s fives and sixes are right up your alley i think that's a great ballpark investment there i mean if we look at 85 rated cards on their graph it seems like maybe they go down for a week but then the next week or two weeks boom they're back up to five to six thousand coins you don't even need 85s to go any higher than 5k in the next two weeks for you to make really good money on this kind of fodder investment so again i'm going to shout that out because that's very very low they might stay low for the rest of the week and into the weekend but i think that's an investment right now that if you're just like i'm tired of this thing i'm going to buy some cards sit on it wait for it to go up and then maybe that'll bring me back closer to team of the season or maybe even during team of the season if it's that long i think that's a great investment still there high rated fodder at the moment basically the same price maybe down a smidge yeah maybe since yesterday maybe it goes up a little today with the rewards once again but i wouldn't expect it to be too much i mean fodder again is just so mudded comparatively to previous years and uh the way that there's just so many packs and stuff uh on this game right now now one thing to watch out for today is we kind of talk about what's going to be coming today on tuesday and into this game one thing i will say is watch out for potentially some leaks for golasso players in team two i wouldn't say that it's a guarantee that we get leaks today i'm just saying it's possible i think tuesdays uh maybe even tuesdays last week was the time when we started to get le leaks nukes <laughs> words bro leaks news and information about cards that are going to be coming out for team one so it could be that same time frame this week for team number two now you guys know about tuesdays right let's go tuesday content and talk about it gamble tuesdays we have the 88 plus winter wild cards uh fantasy no fc versus team of the year honorable mentions player pick i think there's a, a shot that they actually could maybe go into future stars adding future stars into these player picks but man again ea has been so repeatable can we break the cycle we've had an 88 plus we started with like an 86 plus player pick then it went to 87 now it's 88 plus and i don't think these are terrible sbcs i just think it's getting so repetitive on tuesdays we've been calling them gamble tuesdays for the greater part of a month and a half because we know some sort of player pick like this is coming out every tuesday i don't hate the sbc i don't do it that often but i'm just saying a little bit of a surprise would be nice. It's getting very, very predictable with some of the content on the menus. I know we're in and out of it every single day. You guys watch the videos like to stay up to speed with it and everything. But some uh, something that's surprising, something that's a little bit different, even if it's the same type of SBC, just something a little bit different. EA, spice it up, a little bit of variety. I would say that'd be nice, and it would make me a little more interested in maybe even doing the SBC myself now also a golasso player sbc right i mean we have had the alawayran we have had the rafa marquez um technically we have not had a golasso icon sbc yet we had the mia ham um but we haven't had a golasso icon player just yet so maybe that's coming i don't know maybe that's coming in team two i don't imagine they're going to drop a ton more icon slash hero at player sbcs there's already so many icon sbcs that are out right now so i don't know if that's part of their plan there aren't any leaks at the moment either which i'm fine with that a little bit of surprise in the player sbc department i'm always down for but there's no leaks no news at the moment but i could see tuesday being a day where we maybe get ourselves a 
player SBC of some sort. Again, I think it's going to be a quieter day. Besides that pick and everything refreshing per normal, is this Erling Holland? It is not Erling Holland. It is Hegerberg. I'll still take that, though, from an 84 times 3. Um, I think it's going to be another quieter day, but honestly, take these quieter days um, and use them to get yourself some more um, completion in the cup if you're doing that. Maybe get some Rivals wins in. Again, the Rivals wins are so good for the rewards that you get. It is worth hitting those every single week if possible. So look into those again today um, and maybe just getting ahead on a little bit of stuff in the menus. Ooh, I really wish that was Renard. That would have been sick. So Rivals progress, getting ahead on champs and um, maybe a little bit of the cup. That's what I'm going to be looking forward to today to get ahead on that while it's kind of a, maybe a quieter part of the week. And man, I really got to get some daily gold upgrades done because my club is like mudded in terms of the gold common. So I had some squad battle rewards that weren't very good, but they were there. So hopefully I have some more gold commons now. And as I keep leveling up in objectives and getting the daily play and all that sort of stuff done, I love that the daily play is back. I, I missed a day though. Oh, I missed it on the weekend. So this actually goes away today, really. All right, so the ultimate birthday daily play completionist goes away. Interesting. That's a bit of a bummer. Does anything else go away today that I should be doing? Ultimate birthday, Cold Omani. So 23 days left on that. Milestones. Plenty of time there. So, yeah, I guess last day to maybe finish up some daily play games and get yourself something out of that. But I am fully invested at the moment in some flips. I picked up a Neymar. Um, this is the first time I bought a Neymar card this entire year. I don't know what his price is right now. I picked him up for 1.9 because I just was scrolling Footbin and noticed he was very low. He sells a lot around 2.2 million coins. And, yeah, he's got a 2.08, 2.09, and then a 2 mil flat. But I think this is a card that I'll be able to sell hopefully – or somewhere just north of 2.2 million cheeky 100k profit there maybe a little bit a little bit more than that if all goes well um, after tax that could be a nice flip but i'm still motivated by the trading grind that's why i am uh basically broke at the moment we're trading we're grinding getting these coins up so that we can open more store packs open more big packs do more upgrade sbcs during team of the year so that's gonna be the video for today guys if you did enjoy drop a thumbs up on it comment down below if you have any questions and what your situation was with the whole um compensation i want to know if any of you guys got compensated and what you're gonna do with some of those coins and uh yeah guys if you pack anything sick any of these golasso cards tweet me my twitter link is down below in the description as well i love seeing that you like today somebody tweeted me a picture of cruyff and ginola in the same freaking pack bro it was definitely a store pack but like that's bananas, okay? So tweet me if you get anything sick. But I'll see you guys in a Twitch stream today. That link's down below in the description. If you want to catch us live, working the menus, talking through market, and just hanging out, that link is down below there. So if you enjoyed this video today, again, drop a thumbs up on it. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you guys in the stream today. It's been Nathan for the Catch you later. Peace.